And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical weather bulletin for July 23rd. Two fledging tropical cyclones are currently active in the Western Hemisphere. Hurricane Douglas is intensifying and so is Tropical Storm Gonzalo in the Central Atlantic. Both of them could be threats to land in the next five days, that's why we're code yellow right now on the Tico scale. Day 53 of Atlantic hurricane season, there's a 60% chance that we've designated 91L. National Hurricane Center gives it a higher chance. Gonzalo, their tropical storm, headed towards the Caribbean islands. Day 70 in the eastern Pacific, and Douglas is still very far away from land, but it does pose a risk to the Hawaiian islands uh, late this weekend into the early part of next week. No systems active in the Western Pacific right now. The drought continues for that basin, which has been uncharacteristically quiet this month. And in the Indian Ocean, we still have that 30% system, which we'll have a little peep at later on in the bulletin, uh, which could, but probably won't develop in the next few days. Well, Gonzalo is probably the main feature. It's the one we've ran with at, at least 50 mile an hour winds, an estimated pressure of 999 millibars. CDPS stage two, exactly 1,000 miles east southeast of Barbados, 9.9 .9 north, 45 degrees west. Its current trajectory takes it towards the west northwest, becoming a hurricane in the next 24 to 48 hours, and it looks like, to us at least, and it will pass very close to Barbados and St. Lucia and St. Vincent and the Grenadines and then move into the eastern and then central Caribbean Sea as a tropical storm weakening by that point. There is uncertainty about that track, so don't take it at face value. There is, of course, a cone with every track forecast, and that was delineated by those circles that you saw. So there's Gonzalo on the map there. It's a rather small system, so intensity fluctuations are likely. And you can see the Gulf of Mexico there as well, that uh, system with a moderate to high chance depending on who you go by. There it is right now, we're really lacking rotation on that system though at the moment. Hurricane Douglas is looking better, at least from a distance. You can see quite clearly an eye developing, um, and some suspect that perhaps it may be stronger than what we're seeing right now. Currently we're stick sticking with Category 1 status like the National Hurricane Center are, uh, but suggestions that this could be rapid intensification underway, and we are forecasting a Category 3 peak. In the Western Pacific though, it's looking very quiet as I said a moment ago. Just a few pop-up thunderstorms really are on either side of the Philippines and also a few little rumbles here and there near the northern Mariana Islands up towards the Japanese Islands. For the north there are some extratropical lows uh, causing some inclement weather in northern China and the Korean Peninsula. In the South Pacific, things look fairly quiet here as well, unsurprisingly, a few thunderstorms blowing up around the Solomon Islands, uh, the eastern part of Papua New Guinea, and extending just about to the northernmost islands of Vanuatu. In the Indian Ocean, you can now see that potential tropical cyclone down there. It's having a go at least, but it doesn't look like it's going to get the rotation needed. Um, it still lacks a lot at the moment, uh, and it doesn't look too great right now. Sea surface temperatures then haven't really changed in the eastern Pacific, but there will probably be a cool pool uh, after the track of uh, Douglas. You can probably see it already, actually. A little area near the center of your screen there, dipping below 28 degrees Celsius. The Atlantic Ocean, you can see just how warm those waters are once again. The Gulf of Mexico, uh, by and large, 28 to 30 degrees Celsius all over. The Western Caribbean, even warmer. If a storm finds itself there this year, it will have a pretty decent go um, and in the Indian Ocean things staying fairly warm here in general as well the Bay of Bengal 30 degrees plus uh, to the north uh, but not likely to see any tropical cyclones anytime soon the Western Pacific still the warm anomaly continues in the South China Sea and also in the Gulf of Tonkin where the temperatures are 30 to 32 degrees Celsius the Philippine Sea around 30 degrees as well so large areas that are ready for tropical cyclone activity, but there's just not the systems forming so far in the Western Pacific, very stable. And there's the anomalies once again, again the South China Sea and into the Indian Ocean, very warm compared to average. Eastern Pacific high and low, um, but more low really with the La Nina in effect, and the Atlantic Ocean, the areas that matter are all well above average at this point. So that's something to really watch out for indeed. The area where Gonzalo is right now is included. Well, here's a look at Douglas though. Uh, you can see that eye developing and uh, 
swirling around there. It's a rather small system itself, like Gonzalo, uh, but it is a little bit larger. Of course, it's stronger right now with winds pushing 85 miles per hour, and it looks to me and to many people as though it is undergoing a period of intensification, whether it's rapid or not. We'll wait and see, but it does look like it's intensifying uh, significantly, and that's not good news for the Hawaiian Islands, which could see a realistic possibility of a hurricane landfall from this storm, either on the Big Island or even further north in Maui. We could see a hurricane or a strong tropical storm landfall, which is a little bit more likely, honestly, um, out of this, but wait and see what happens with that as we continue to watch this storm. It's not going to be extremely quick. It'll be around four days' time. Here's what models are saying on uh, the current uh, storm Gonzalo in the Atlantic. I was losing my train of thought there. You can see a few models, the HMON, HWRF calling for category two out of that. Uh, wind shear is going to be very favorable in the low range, uh, lower than 15 knots, that's really low. Sea surface temperatures 28 plus, that's rather high. Relative humidity will be around average and you can see the track consensus. Most models actually, well the three that we've got highlighted there have shifted north of the National Hurricane Center track. On this day, on July 23rd, 2008, Hurricane Dolly was making landfall in Texas, just north of the border. You can see an animated loop there at the bottom. Cristobal was fading fast off the coast of Atlantic Canada. So was Fausto in the eastern Pacific. And Genevieve was a tropical storm at this point, so a little bit of a role reversal. The East Pacific was up to the G name, and the Atlantic was up to the D name. Uh, elsewhere, the West Pacific was also dead on that day as well, so uh, there's quite a few comparisons we can draw with 2008, but uh, none that are particularly relevant. So the next name on the Atlantic naming list is Hannah, without a H at the end, as many people have spelt it so far, I've noticed, followed by Asias. In the Eastern Pacific, it's Elida, followed by Fausto. In the Central Pacific, the next name on list one is Hone. In the Western Pacific, Sinlaku is next up on list 3, and in the North Indian Ocean, the next name on list 1, the brand new list over there, is Gatti, followed by Nivar. In the Southern Hemisphere, its uh, chances might be slipping just a little bit for that Southwest Indian Ocean cyclone, but it would get the name Alicia if it did form, followed by Bongoyo. Uh, and in the Australian region, Imogen, followed by Joshua, and in the South Pacific, Yolanda. Um, we may have a tropical weather bulletin tomorrow, but I don't know because of our work schedule, we'll see. Check out our new look cyclone tracker on the Force 13 website for the latest up-to-date information. You can also find us, of course, on our YouTube channel, search Force 13, and also on Facebook and Twitter, Force 13 at Force 13 on Twitter for the latest updates. You can also help the project become even better by becoming an Ultimate Fan on YouTube. To see the full list of Ultimate Fan benefits and to join, visit youtube.com forward slash force 13 slash join. With a special thanks to our top supporters this month. You can also check out our growing merch store so you can show Force 13's colours wherever you go. You can also find a link to our Discord server underneath this video in the description.